All right, guys. So uh, as you all know, the Heritage Foundation is a right-wing think tank. There are many other right-wing think tanks like the American Enterprise Institute. A bunch of these are Koch brothers funded. And there's a lot of billionaire robber baron money that, that fuels this media industrial complex. And um, one of the things they do is they release these like policy papers to make it look like this is serious academia and expertise. But really, they're just pushing stuff out there to try to convince people tax cuts for the rich are always good. Deregulating the marketplace is always good. Who cares if the air and the water is now dirty and we're polluting like crazy? Whatever big business wants, big business can and should get. And that is academically and logically the right path for the country. That's why these right-wing think tanks exist. Now, they also crafted Project 2025. Project 2025, we've covered in detail, it marries extreme social conservative is conservatism with extreme right-wing libertarian economics. So on social conservatism, they want to ban porn. They want to usher in Christian nationalism. They want to ban abortion nationwide. We've gone through all of this. Um, on economic stuff, like I said, is deregulation for big business, tax cuts for the rich and for the robber barons and the billionaires. And um, the other thing is they want to totally destroy the administrative state. So no regulation from the government. Um, and they want to go full authoritarian with the unitary executive theory. They want Trump to have, you know, no holds barred. Trump can do whatever the hell he wants to do. Okay. So here's this guy, Heritage Foundation president, Kevin Roberts. And um, he comes out and says this very disturbing, cryptic thing about where we're going to go from here after the Supreme Court decision. Read Hamilton's number 70, because there, along with some other essays, in some other essays, he talks about the importance of a vigorous executive. You know, former congressman, the importance of Congress doing its job, but we also know the importance of the executive being able to do his job. And can you imagine, Dave Bratt, any president, put politics off to the side, any president having to second guess, triple guess every decision they're making in their official capacity, you couldn't have the republic that you just described. But number three, let me speak about the radical left. You and I have both been parts of faculties and faculty senates and understand that the left has taken over our institutions. The reason that they are apoplectic right now, the reason that so many anchors on MSNBC, for example, are losing their minds daily is because our side is winning. And so I come full circle in this response and just want to encourage you with some substance that we are in the process of the second American revolution, which will remain bloodless if the left allows it to be. We're in the process of the second American revolution, which will remain bloodless if the left allows it to be. What if the left dissents? What if the left disagrees? What if the left protests? What if the left stands up against your authoritarian takeover? What then? Are you saying it will no longer be bloodless? Are you saying you guys break out the weapons? You guys start cracking skulls? You guys start locking up political opponents? Is that what you're saying? Because that seems to be kind of implied in what you just said, sir. One more time, one more time. So many anchors on MSNBC, for example, are losing their minds daily is because our side is winning. And so I come full circle in this response and just want to encourage you with some substance that we are in the process of the second American revolution, which will remain bloodless if the left allows it to be. That sounds like a threat. That sounds like a not so subtle threat. By the way, this stuff has more teeth now that the Supreme Court says Trump is immune. Presidents are immune from anything that they could somehow declare is a quote unquote official act, they're immune. Even if it's a stretch to say it's an official act, even if it's on the outer perimeter of an official act, it's an official act, can't do anything. What do you think Trump's gonna do knowing he has that power, knowing he has that leeway, knowing he has that ability? What do you think he's going to do? And now we got people talking about a second American revolution and it'll be bloodless if the left allows it to be. In other words, if the left speaks up, if the left tries to get things passed for their agenda, no. Then we're coming at you full bore. By the way, think of the irony here. This guy was talking there highly about the unitary executive theory. Hey, you gotta let the president do what the president's gotta do, right? The executive's gotta do his job, just like Congress has to do its job. And he makes it seem like, well, obviously we should be in favor of an emperor, overlord, god king. That's what he's saying. But you know damn well the second there's a Democratic president who actually uses power, somebody like FDR, what would he say? The exact opposite. 
He would start whining and shrieking and moaning and claiming, you're not allowed to do that stuff that you're doing because <laughs> you're a strong executive, but you're for a social democratic agenda. I'm against that. We don't want socialism. We don't want leftism. We don't even want liberalism. We want right-wing politics. As soon as a strong lefty starts doing things for the American people, he would totally flip on his so-called principles and he would say, small government. I'm in favor of small government. You have to check the executive. Remember how much these people bitched over executive orders done by Obama and Biden? And by the way, respectively, they did fewer executive orders than Trump did. But they would whine and bitch, executive orders, they're unconstitutional, they're authoritarian. Now he's like, bro, we should have the strongest executive you could possibly have, bro. Let him do whatever they want, bro. See, that's what I can't respect people like this. Because at least the principled conservatives, there was an article in the Washington Examiner that was bemoaning the Supreme Court decision on immunity because they said, look, you know, people might like it on the right now, but what happens if there's a president AOC or a president whoever fill in the blank with some liberal, some left winger? They, they would hate it. They know they'd hate it, right? They know they'd hate it. By the way, it's kind of ironic that the Supreme Court says the president's immune. They could basically do whatever the hell they want. But then also they slap down Biden trying to um, reduce student loan debt. That's insane. They also made it illegal for homeless people to sleep outside. Remember that? We just covered that decision. So we should test this. If the president can do whatever they want, what if they were homeless and they tried to sleep outside? Would they be allowed to do that? Or would the Supreme Court decision on saying fuck the homeless override the decision on presidential immunity? I don't know. You tell me. We're, we're ruled by a bunch of judicial supremacist fucking morons, man. We are. We are. And now we got threats. And by the way, like I said, the threats have more teeth. The threats have more teeth because... Their Supreme Court effectively is giving Trump the green light. And Trump, if he gets back in there, we all know he's going to pack his administration with loyalists. Nobody's going to tell him no. So the next time he wants to send out, he wants to send the troops into the streets of America and invoke the Insurrection Act, he's going to be able to do it. And ain't a damn thing we can do to stop it. And this guy's reaction, hey, if you're on the left, sit down and shut up. Don't make a peep. And then maybe you won't bleed. Dark times, man. As dark as it gets. Hey y'all, do me a favor and like and subscribe. It helps out big time in the algorithm. Click the bell as well for notifications when videos drop. And watch that video on screen right now. You know you want to.